Most things can be made to vibrate. If you strike something, it will make a noise. The noise is caused by the particles making up the object you strike, oscillating. These particles in turn make the particles in the air around it vibrate, which in turn makes your eardrum vibrate and allows you to hear the sound. The sound contains a note, which is the natural frequency of the object you have struck. If allowed to, the object will vibrate at this frequency. This is free vibration. Free vibration happens when an object is allowed to vibrate naturally, without any further forces interacting with the object. If you raise a swing and let it go, this is free vibration. If you pull an object on a swing and release it, this is free vibration. Free vibration is simply the natural motion an object follows when allowed to vibrate. A forced vibration is when a vibration is forced to continue in a fixed pattern. For example, a swing can behave as both free and forced. If you allow the swing to go free and oscillate, this is free vibration. If you make the swing swing, then this is forced vibration. If there's a child in the swing and you're pushing them, this is forced vibration. You provide a force to the swing at the start of a complete cycle to maintain or increase the amplitude of the oscillation. If you are the person doing the swinging though, then you usually provide a force at both the start and midway through the oscillation, both maximum amplitudes. When you force objects to vibrate, you create a system with two oscillators, the driver and the driven oscillator. For frequencies below the natural frequency of the driven oscillator, the driver and driven oscillators are in phase with each other. When the driver moves forward, the driven moves forward too. This is true up to the natural frequency. Let's look at the example of the swing, but see it a little differently. Instead of letting go of the swing once you push it, you are going to stay with the swing throughout its entire journey. The more you move forward and backward with the swing at the same rate, you are in phase with the swing. When it moves forward, you move forward. When it moves back, you move back. But now you want to go faster. You push faster forward and faster backward. The swing stays in step with you as, as you move backwards and forwards, up until a point. At this point the swing has reached its natural frequency. The driving oscillator and the driven oscillator have reached resonance. At this point the driver and the driven are 90 degrees or pi over 2 radians out of phase. Instead of pushing the swing all the time you are all, instead of pushing the swing, you are travelling faster than the swing so that you give the swing an extra push when the swing is going fastest. This makes the swing go faster than it naturally would do. Effectively, you are moving backwards and forwards so fast that you miss the swing most of the time, but hit it when it is at its fastest, at the bottom of the swing, and going in the same direction as you. Beyond this frequency, the driver oscillator is anti-phase to the driven oscillator. Effectively, this reduces the vibration of the system. Every time the swing is moving backwards, you are moving forwards. In our swing example, we can see the problem of resonance. When the swing is at its fastest, it is made to go faster. This in turn makes the swing go higher. If the driver frequency is maintained at the resonance frequency, the swing will keep getting faster and faster and higher and higher until the swing eventually loops a loop. This is equivalent to catastrophic structural failure. The most often quoted example of catastrophic mechanical failure caused by an object being forced to vibrate at its resonance frequency is that of a shattering glass. An opera singer maintains a note in air that is the same as the natural frequency of a drinking glass. This drinking glass will visibly vibrate as the molecules inside the glass are made to vibrate, and the amplitude of these vibrations increases. If the resonant frequency is maintained long enough, the glass will shatter, having suffered catastrophic structural failure. In engineering, this resonant frequency effect has been seen in the Tacoma Narrows in the USA. Here, a sus suspension bridge collapsed after being exposed to low-frequency gusting winds for a prolonged time. This caused the bridge to vibrate at its natural frequency, increasing the amplitude of vibration of the bridge, making it ripple, bulge and buckle until it eventually collapsed. This collapse led to new dampening techniques being used on subsequent bridges in similar circumstances. In fact, very tall buildings have oscillators placed in within the structure that react to external drivers to damp the oscillation of the building. Damping removes or reduces vibration. All naturally occurring vibrations are damped to some extent or another. Damping removes energy from an oscillating system. 
In real oscillators, friction and resistive forces remove energy from the system all the time. Damping can be used to remove vibration. For example, the shock absorbers in cars use damping systems to smooth out a road journey. A system that is lightly damped allows the oscillator to continue to vibrate, gradually reducing the amplitude to zero over many oscillations. Heavy damping reduces the vibration much more quickly. Critical damping stops oscillations going past the equilibrium position, and overly damped systems keep the vibration above the equilibrium position. A damped system has a different resonance to an undamped system. Damping forces the amplitude of vibration at resonance lower, and the frequency of resonance lower also.